All right, I'd like to call to order a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board at 6.30 on April 10th, 2023. First order of business would be approving the minutes from April 3rd. I move we approve the minutes from our last meeting, April 3rd. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of approving the minutes signify by saying aye. I think you need to second. Oh, even though we don't have a person to second, so I can second it? Okay. All right, so I will second the approval of the minutes. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All right, two zero. All right, so under new business, we have the dangerous nuisance dog settlement discussion. And it is not downloading for me. With this? Oh, I'm just trying to download. Uh, yeah, that's that. Okay, that's this. All right. So. Do we want to introduce, like, what's happened since yeah. the hearing? And so, um, I think it was J early January, January 6th, maybe? There was a hearing. Um, and the select board found that uh, Lobo was a dangerous dog and um, put some orders on it. Um, it had to be muzzled. It wasn't allowed outdoors between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Uh, had to be under control and supervised. Um, there was a fenced area that was described. Um, since that time, uh, Lobo's owners have appealed that decision um, and proposed a settlement offer, um, which the select board has considered um, at, in executive session, and um, we'll discuss now. All right. So you want to just read off the? Sure. Okay. So they would like the designation of the dog as dangerous removed and replaced with the designation of nuisance. <coughs> Condition number four, which was the dog being, not being outside between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., they would like amended to between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. The dog could be let out two times for intervals of no greater than 15 minutes and it should be brought inside immediately if it is barking during that time frame. Within 30 days of the revised order, the dog shall be enrolled in a training program with a professional trainer to address the dog's barking and the owner shall provide the animal control officer with a certificate of completion of the program within 30 days of entry of this revised order. 90. Oh, I'm sorry, 90, thank you. That's why we have these sitting up there. The owner acknowledges and agrees that the board reserves the right to act on any future complaints about the barking, which may include the assessment of fines and or issuance of a new order after further hearing. And then all other conditions in the board's December 6th, 2022 order shall remain in force in effect. So, do we do we need to take a vote to approve yeah, that to amend the order? Yep. Okay. All right. So, I will move that we accept the amended order as negotiated and as announced here. Okay. I will second that. Is there any discussion? Could you just clarify what? It looks like more stays the same than what changes. Correct. So could you just clarify mm -hmm. the, 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 the changes? The changes only. So the changes is changing the wording from dangerous to nuisance. It still, you know, is still an order. It's just the changes on that. The other change is that it's allowed outside mm -hmm. twice during 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. at no greater than 15 minutes has to be brought inside immediately. Mm -hmm. 
you know, if it is barking um, in those, when it's outside, it does have to be supervised. Um, and then the enrolled in the training program within 30 days of accepting this change order. And that's, it, that's something that wasn't in the original order. That's an additional concession on their part mm -hmm. in order to, to come to an agreement. Yeah. And the, the uh, supervised outside means outside the home or outside the property? outside the home. the home and this is between 6 or I'm sorry between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. So someone would actually be outside with the dog when it's out during those 15 minute breaks yes it, it should be supervised yes. yes yep and the idea there is that we agreed that it was not reasonable to say your dog can't go to the bathroom at all for this entire period of time and so we agreed to giving them some very very regulated very short breaks mm -hmm. that allow them to you know let the dog relieve itself in the middle of the night um, without compromising the nature of the order in general. Um, and then the, what was the, the fourth one? Uh, yeah, and basically the four and five are just be saying that everything else in the order continues as stands and, and that this also only covers the stuff dealt with by the hearing and that other any future complaints or future issues would be held, held separately, which isn't really a change from what would, would normally be the case. It's just a clarification of what the policy would be in that case, if that makes and, sense. And how did we get from dangerous to back to nuisance? So the short answer is that the, what it's called matters so much less than the wording in the order. It's like if somebody kills somebody, right? They can be charged with manslaughter or third degree murder. Mm -hmm. If the punishment's gonna be the same regardless of what they're charged with, what they're charged with doesn't matter as much in the end than having the, the stuff we wanna have done in the order. And we talked to the lawyer and legally, there is no difference in terms of enforcement or in terms of the teeth of the order with the wording either way. Um, and we felt it was a position that we could make a compromise on in order to make this the order stick and make this move forward if that makes sense yep I, I hear you does it does it play a role at all in whether the dog um is whether there's any particular insurance coverage for somebody else should this happen again um i don't believe so but that wasn't specifically discussed so i can't really say one way or the other on that that i um, i don't know i'm not a yeah expert in insurance, I, I don't know. I think that's, if, if there's a dog that's close that can do that kind of damage, it would be nice to know that uh, I'm not selling my children to fix the problem. Yeah. No, um, the, the order being in place and the designation either way should be enough to establish a pre-existing condition, whatever, whatever you want to call it, establish that it, it's currently an issue. Um, I, and this is not based on any, you know, definitive knowledge, but I would imagine that that's not going to make a difference either way in terms of um, that kind of thing. But I, I would have to. I would hope so. That's yeah. all. That, that's a concern. Yeah. Yep. I'm the dog owner, and I'm here to tell everyone. Lobo is a dog with a very good nature. He is not dangerous, violent, or aggressive at all. There are a lot of things I did not tell I did not say because Michael asked me not to say it. He told me that it was his fault. He already told the animal control, he did not want to file a complaint, and he also asked, said his kids, he would not allow them to file a complaint. Out of embarrassment, there are a lot of details from he come in, how he teased my dog with the meat, la pop. He asked me not to say it, so I did not say it, but I did not know things would turn out this way. However, my understanding is from this lady who was my neighbor, who would, uh, my understanding is our settlement is this dangerous dog thing is over now. It's taking it off. It's a nuisance. I'm willing to train this dog. And, and if it's 
in the future, there's a complaint of a barking. It's just a barking issue. Is that right? If the dog bites somebody else and they complain, then that would be that's a separate a, difference. Yes, that's yes. a new issue. If it was barking that right. would, and somebody complained, that would be another hearing. Right. But the, this previous issue that Michael walking to trespass to my gate and then this issue is over now. You are not going to go back to just because somebody brought an issue and then you will say, oh, this dog is dangerous again. As long as he's behaved, he did not bite anybody, just that like anybody stopped, did not bite anybody. This, you are not going to bias to say, to bring it back, to say, oh, this dog, uh, it's dangerous because he is barking again, right? It's just a barking issue. So, so correct me if I'm wrong, but our understanding is that this specific incident was brought to us. We had a public hearing on it. We made a decision on it, much like double jeopardy. If, he, if they're just barking in the future, that will be treated as just barking in the future. Right. Now, if he bites someone in the future, that's still going to be handled seriously as a bite, but it's not going to like kick in some extra punishment or something well, like that. Well, it wouldn't right. be just a bite. It would be aggression towards yeah, another or, or, human. Yeah, exactly. If, if, there's right. a dangerous, right. if there's a dangerous issue, yes. that would be treated as that separate issue right. with the understanding that it's not like this is going to be... You know, in like a, a court, right? You can you can ask the, the judge to not present certain information to a jury. This is public knowledge that this exists, and that would be something that would be completely legitimate for someone to bring up as establishing past behavior. Now, in terms of us punishing the dog further because of this, if we reach a settlement, that's the end of this particular okay. issue, and we're not going to yes. be looking to try to like add extra punishment on in the future, um, as long as all parties are aware that we are going to treat any future issues <coughs> or aggressiveness as future issues. Yes, as a, for all the dog out there. Yeah. Yes. That, are you on the same page as me there, Jeff? Okay. All right. Does anyone else have any comments that they'd like to make or questions? I don't see anyone on our Zoom meeting over here or anyone in the audience. Would you like me to move that we accept the... Yeah. All right. Um, I move that we accept the uh, settlement agreement that we came up with that was presented here today. I'll second it. And again, any further discussion? Nope. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Two zero. Yep. Sorry, I heard three. Thank you. Oh, no, I did say two. Yeah, that's just your... I'm deja vu from that. all the other it, meetings we've had. It's, yeah, it, it's just kind of implied. Okay, so now that that's done, next order of business is accounting options. Do we, we have the town clerk on, do we want to do the registrars and early voting in case she wants to? Sure. Okay. Then we will move to the appointment of the board of registrars. So we have an appointment for Edward Kelly through term ending March 2026, Alan Richards, term ending March 2025, Donald Patterson, term ending March 2024. All right, I move that we appoint Edward Kelly, Alan Richards, and Donald Patterson to the Board of Registrars for the terms mentioned. Okay, I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Two zero. And then you want to do the vote early voting also? All right, so we'll do the, we're going to vote for the in office early voting. Days would be Monday, May 1st from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tuesday, May 2nd, and Wednesday, May 3rd, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Thursday, May 4th, from 9 a.m. to noon. I move that we um, accept the in-office early voting hours as presented. Okay, I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye to zero. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy.
All right, so now we'll go back to the accounting options. Yeah. So, um, so we forget what we talked about last week and, and what's happened since then. But um, I have prepared a um, procurement form that basically outlines what we need. Um, we got a. Uh, I don't want to say it's a quote. We got uh, somebody indicated that they thought that they could get us caught up by the end of June or close to caught up by the end of June um, with it with a, for a reasonable amount of money. I think it was um, you said I could have. Did you did you give me one last twenty five thousand? I think you said twenty five for the next quarter. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Okay, um, so it might be. Like thirty, the ten thousand a month. Um, so I'm going to put this out though. See what responses we get. I just wanted yeah. to um, let you know that I was doing that and and make sure. So the the goal would be get it out. I would probably send it out after this meeting. Um, ha ask people to respond by Friday, um, with the hope that next Tuesday, because Monday is a holiday, we can award the contract and just move on it. Beautiful. Yeah. Do you need any kind of vote on that, or just wanted to present that to us? No, I just wanted to, yeah, you know. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So, moving on to old business. Does anyone here have new business to bring up? No? Okay. Moving on to old business. There's an ARPA request for $4,000 to paint and seal the public safety complex. Do you have any more information on that one, Jeff? I do. Um, and actually, there's a second one that came in after we posted the agenda, but it was very small. So the public safety complex, um, the police chief went out and quoted, like went to Home Depot and just said, this is how much paint, talked to a painter, um, thinks that they can um, get volunteers to do the painting. Okay. Um, Chief has a plan, so this would be enough to get paint for the entire building. So police and fire side, and then fire would could paint it, get volunteers, or hire somebody. All right, so this is painting inside the building. Inside, yes, okay. the interior, correct. Yeah. And the ceiling is of the floors? The ceiling of the floors, yeah. S-E-A-I, S-E-A-L. Yes. Because otherwise, ceiling. Yes, that's that's. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. I move. Or, sorry. Yeah. No. I see nothing there. All right. I move that we appropriate four thousand dollars from ARPA funds in order to um, paint and seal the public safety complex. I will second that. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, two zero. So the other one that I thought you would be okay with is the library had a request for about $350 to get a uh, webcam, cordless mic, and uh, tripod so that they could do um, speakers. Like, it, they don't... They, they don't need 360 degrees. They want a directional thing and a wireless mic so somebody could walk around and do presentations and, and stream it. So okay. um, we don't have the equipment that they were looking for. I checked the, um, the wire, you know, they wanted a, sort of a lapel yeah. mic and uh, a pan tilt zoom camera, which we don't have, um, and then the, the tripod stand. Yeah you can set a computer on so I thought it was a reasonable request in fairly short money yeah and so that's to be focused only on the person presenting not an audience exactly audience. not not like a meeting but yeah. more of a presentation okay is the library planning on doing like a series of TED talks or something like that is that what the plan is or that would be like, awesome in general they just you know office yeah I think that you know business changing with with the pandemic, um, they're finding different ways of reaching out to people and want to make sure that they can continue to do so. I mean, I know there's a lot of wonderful activities like Tom McCarty coming with his birds and whatnot that if people who can't make it can watch online, it would be great. So I'm all for that. All right. Do you want me to? 
motion that one. Go ahead. All right. I motion we appropriate three hundred fifty dollars from ARPA funds in order to purchase audiovisual equipment for the library. Okay. I will second that. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Two zero. All right, budget discussion. Oh, that's not important. We can skip over that one. <laughs> budget discussion. So, um, last week I think we were at about sixty thousand dollar deficit. This week, half that, thirty three thousand. Um, we got there mostly because of. Um, the property tax paid from Sanderson Place. Um, they increased that increased the new growth um, by about twenty five thousand. The other change that I made was I moved two family PPO health plans from the healthcare line to the reserve line because. I didn't want to. I didn't want to seem like we were inflating the insurance number, um, and I wanted. I feel. I felt like adding additional, even though we think that we need an additional cover. There doesn't actually give the full picture of what it's going to cost. Okay. Um, so. Um, this includes one hundred and fifty thousand in free cash. And where are we on the grant that the school committee got for the? The teaching role. I mean, that, that's what Peter was talking about when we got here, wasn't it? Yes. My understanding is that that is a one-time grant that could be used to fund the position, but if it's used to fund the position, then mm -hmm. it wouldn't be used to fund something else um, that the school would have to find money for. Okay. So, um, and it doesn't help the following years, obviously, because of right. one-time grants. Yep. So I think that there are, you know, off the top of my head, I think there are a couple things that we can do. Um, you know, at the end of the last meeting, we talked one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand in free cash. If we up it to two hundred thousand, I mean, one eighty would get us there. Right. So um, there. Let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, we can reduce the contingency for, for the health care plans. Um, so, with the um, health care plans, though, are we, I know you said you took two PPOs out. I or, kept them in the right, budget, but, but yeah. Yes. Move them. Yep. So, my question with that is, if we're, we've got, on this budget, we've got two new employees, Correct. We've got, or potentially two new employees, the school yep. and the um, highway department maintenance. Uh, no, that was taken off. It would be okay. the um, resource administrator. In resource. Part, and that, which would be part-time. Okay. Less than 20 hours part-time? Yes. Okay, so they wouldn't be eligible for return to Okay. Okay. That, that's what I was just trying to figure out if that was... So, in terms of the... Could we, could we take those out? Sure. Use less free cash? Sure. But it doesn't really matter because one of two things is going to happen. Either some, either two new people added to the plan, in which case we need the money, or they don't, in which case the money that we have put in the budget for that goes back into free cash next year anyways. So it, to me it seems like I'd rather leave them in the budget to be more realistic than take them out and maybe look like we're using less free cash, but you know, maybe not. Um, Oh no, I would, yeah, so I hear what you're saying. I was just trying to figure out if the new employees were being covered with the potential for insurance. Yeah, I mean, I think every year we do, we include two right. more than the exactly. subscribers anyway. So Than the current subscribers, right. yes. And so adding another two, um, just yeah, because it's more, um, it's less expensive. Right, and um, we don't know what these, what the new hires, yeah, even if they're going to have needed or not. So, I guess a couple of other things just 
to mention um, that that we haven't talked about. Probably the biggest is, you know, whether or not we want to put any additional money into um, our OPEB fund. We've been putting in about thirty-three thousand dollars a year, which is going to get us funded, but not for a long time. You remember what that fund's about? Um, other post-employment benefits. So, in addition to retirement, um, basically when people retire, I don't, I don't. Is it? I think it's healthcare. Is that right? Does anybody know? I think so. Yeah. I think mostly mm -hmm. it's healthcare. Healthcare okay. costs. Um, so it's, yeah. Uh, Every every municipality or um, retirement system is dealing with it, and you know we don't always have um, this amount of free cash. And I know we have a lot of needs for it, but that that is uh, we don't want to lose sight of OPEP because that'll that'll come to bite us eventually. Now, in terms of free cash, is in general it better to divvy that up into different buckets at town meeting than just feel like well we've only put. 500 of the, of the free cash money into different buckets. The other 200,000 is just going to sit there for free cash for next year. Is it better to put in stabilization funds or is it better to just kind of leave alone? So, uh, um, <coughs> it depends on what you think you're going to need it for. So, it, in my opinion, and I'll defer to anybody in the room who has more experience, but you don't want to have no free cash because God forbid one of your accounts is in deficit, you don't want to have to pay at the end of the year, you'd rather just have them deduct it, I think. That, that would be my preference. Um, so you don't want zero free cash. I prefer to put stuff in stabilization because from town meeting until the next year's free cash is certified, you can't spend free cash, but you can have a special town meeting and appropriate out of stabilization. So yes, I prefer putting it somewhere other than leaving a hundred to two hundred thousand for potential um and the breakdown is thirty percent into capital stabilization, thirty in budget and what's the other forty percent? It was thirty to cap it's a to close the capital and operating budgets. Um and then I believe it was oh uh, and I'm not remembering off the top of my head what the other one was. Um, John, yeah, no, it would be. Um, it's a general stabilization fund, or is that one? Yes, the thank you. Yes, stabilization. Um, is that the other thirty whatever after you take away the OPEP money? Is there a limit on that amount, or is it just? We can do whatever is left over. No, I mean, and these are guidelines. We can do 50% to stabilization if we want. It's okay, so, hard but this is just rules. what we try to do. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I mean, personally, I would, I would be comfortable doing the 180 for, from free cash to the budget for this year, which would get us to the, the goal line for this. Um, Especially knowing how conservative we are on a lot of our calculations, like adding in the extra payers, um, things like that, I would be I'd be comfortable going from one fifty to one eighty. Yeah. So, up to thirty percent for operating, <clears throat> up to ten percent for general stabilization, up to thirty percent for capital. Leave a hundred thousand. Or twenty five percent for future years. Okay, so we want to leave at least a hundred thousand sitting there for free, for free cash for the next year, based on these guidelines at least. Yeah. So what's our number for free cash? It's seven hundred and yeah. forty something or something like that. Seven thirty seven. Seven sixty something. Seven sixty seven eight thirty three. All right, so let's call. Let's just it at the top line of that. It probably is, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so let's just call it seven fifty because it makes the math a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> if we have seven hundred fifty thousand dollars and we're looking at putting a hundred thousand dollars into free cash for the next year, that's six hundred fifty thousand dollars left. If we put one hundred eighty thousand dollars into the budget, balancing the budget, then that brings us down to four seventy. Um, if we put 
let's say another two hundred thousand dollars in the general stabilization fund, we still have two hundred seventy thousand dollars on to beyond all that to either either do three seventy five or three seventy five into the or three seventy into free cash for next year or that or that's what? not putting any money in capital stable. Oh right, and, and then so we have four seventy with the operating budget and free cash staying. Yeah. Right. So then, money into no, OPEB. let's say another two hundred into capital stabilization. Let's say fifty into OPEB because you're saying that thirty three wasn't enough. Fifty additional. Total fifty. You said you said it was thirty three was the the yeah. OPEB. Okay. So we went from thirty three up to fifty. Okay. Then we're gonna have to increase the free cash that we put in. What's the numbers come out there at this point? So we have, sorry, let me, you know, let me write this down. This will be better if I actually, not trying to do math in my head. Hey, there we go, thank you. All right, so we're going to say 180 is budget. But I guess my point is if we're increasing OPEB in the budget, we're increasing the budget, so we have to increase the free cash. That oh, the OPEB's in the budget itself? Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought that was, I thought you were saying that was a... Yeah, but no, I I, um, I think I understand what you're doing. Okay. Um, increase that, then 180-ish plus you know 20,000, maybe right. 200. 200 to capital stabilization, that should leave about 170, 150. Right, because this would have to go up to 200 if you increase OPEB to 50. All right, so we'll call it 200 for, we'll say 200 for the budget, 200 for stabilization, 200 for capital stabilization. So that's 600 right there, and we have another 150 beyond that. So we could put 150 into set aside for free cash next year and be in good shape. Okay. So there is there's one more um, wrinkle, which isn't a big one, but um, 17,000 of that free cash can only be spent for opioid remediation because it's from settlement funds that we have to right. put in there. Um, so it's going to be, well, I assume you want to subtract that from the 150 that's left, right? Yeah, so 133 or so going to free cash, okay. and then 17 to opioid. Is that the only thing that you can think of that's specifically got to get your mark for something? Let's see. That, that, capital, that's it. And question on the opioid title money. Can we use that towards the ambulance that we're... Buying, or is that not considered to be adjacent enough to be able to use that for that? Um, so it sure seems like our number one tool that we're going to use in town to help fight the opioid could. could yeah, be I know there was discussion of maybe trying to use it to help fund a shared public health nurse too, but mm -hmm. I think that an ambulance. Yeah, I, I can make the argument for a nexus between an ambulance and. Opioid, opioid overdoses. Yeah. Um, so, so that's an option you could consider is having that 17 go into the ambulance to help offset the cost of the ambulance, which is a whole other conversation, but that's a thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel comfortable with 200 in the budget, 200 in stabilization, 200 in capital stabilization, and 133 in free cash, or 150 if we're going to end up using some of the capital money from the opioid money. Is there a time frame on that opioid that needs to be spent in? I mean, we're getting it for the next 10 years, so no. Right, but, but you, not, don't, not you don't have to spend a percentage of it every year no. that you receive it? No. You can basically stockpile it? Yeah. Okay. Eventually it has to be spent on stuff for that, but... I mean, especially if we do end up financing the ambulance, this could potentially be paying that finance payment every year for the next X number of years. Right. So that's definitely something to mull about. All right. Did did you need any action items for us in terms of the budget or just wanted us to No, I think, I think this 
gives me what I need to be able to come back with a balanced budget. Find another set of numbers and yep. um, next week. Or... Yeah, yep. Right. And we're meeting on Tuesday next week, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. All right, so next we have warrant review. Is there still stuff to vote on for the warrant? Um, everything has been added, but Tuesday uh, um, is when we're gonna have to vote on it yeah. and, and sign it, because it needs to be signed no later than next Friday. Yeah. So the goal would be to do it on Tuesday so you don't have to come back. Yeah. Um, so, um, Sorry. If you have any questions, now would be a good time to discuss. But just to clarify, we've already voted on all the articles in here last time or the last two times. Is that correct? You voted to include them on the warrant. At so, the, on Tuesday, it would be a vote whether or not to recommend the art, whether you recommend how me to approve the article or not. Okay, thank you. That's yeah. the institution you're looking for. Okay. Right, so that's where, like this, we'll fill in this select board recommendation. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm. I don't have any questions at this point. I've been paying pretty close attention the whole way. Yeah. So there's nothing that's changed since. No. the The only question. I think that I have is we're creating a frontier capital stabilization fund, but we're not putting any money in it. Do we want to? Well, kind of. Yes. Wasn't that something that you were creating for them so that they could put money in it? When they have excess, extra E and D and they want, they've got uh, they don't want to spend it in that year. I thought that was the, the idea. No, I think they have they have one of those already. I thought this was for each town. That was my understanding <laughs> from no, Shelley. I, 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 I may be wrong. I just wanted to make sure that wasn't the case. Yeah, my, I mean, my understanding... So, I, I can double check, but my understanding was that um, the... Frontier had their own stabilization, and this was for the town. So when they, when Frontier comes in two years and says we need half a million dollars for a roof, we can say great. We've been putting hundred thousand dollars away for the last five years. So it would be to help stabilize our portion of a regional school's capital request. Is my understanding, not the school putting money away for themselves. So they wouldn't have to ask us, but I'll double check. Yeah, it needs to be checked, just to be sure. So I mean, I guess one of the options is that, that you know, your recommendation here was a hundred thousand dollars into the free cash for next year. We could take some of the hundred and fifty or hundred and thirty-three and put that in there. Maybe do fifty thousand dollars seed seed money or something like that. Um, that's an option, I guess. Yeah, I just, I wanted to raise it so you could think about it, and um, if you felt strongly one way or another, I could draft an article <laughs> so you can decide whether or not to include it next time. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's the only new thing. Now, do we, do we have articles on here to transfer money into stabilization? So, what I believe would happen is Article 4 would say move to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds, like transfer from capital stabilization, free cash, blah, 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 for the capital budget. Anything that's left over, yes, we would have to appropriate to stabilization. Can we do that in the budget? Does anybody know? Yes, we do. Or we have. We have. Thank you. We have we have transferred money from free cash to the stabilization. In the budget or in a warrant article? Oh, I'm sorry. Not in the budget, in its own okay. article. Okay. 
yeah, that's that's why I was remembering from years past. Okay. So I'll add that too. But yeah, just to, if, we, if we're going to do that, we're going to need to have the Warren articles for that then. <laughs> There's a note there in the warrant that says, add article to transfer free cash to stabilization. Well, there we are. <laughs> Didn't actually do it. Okay. And those are something we can then vote on on Tuesday, adding those in? Yeah. Okay. Great. So yeah, if you can come up with those, that'd be great. Right. Um, and again... <laughs> It gives you a little bit of time to play with those numbers, you know, obviously what, you know, what we talked about does not have to be exact, right? You're going to figure out yeah. some exacts and then once you get the answer about Frontier, that stabilization fund, again, if you have to play with those numbers a little bit, yep. you know. We know what we need to balance the budget. Then how we divide the rest of it up is. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the key for me was if the select board would prefer to use more free cash or prefer to reduce expenses. And I got the answer, so I can work the math. If I can interrupt again. Yeah. And that might be a Tom Scanlon question because I believe statewide um, there is a sort of a threshold on how much money you have in stabilization. I have no idea what we have, um, you know, because we're not we're, we're a town. We're not um, a savings. You know, we're not saving for high um, a high amount in a stabilization account or else we're overtaxing people. So I don't know what the amounts are, but I do think there is something that maybe we might want to check out to make sure um, what is the better way for cash or stabilization. And that's actually a question that we I should ask. Um, you said we have money already in our general stabilization fund? Yes. And how much do you say that was? Half a million dollars or something like that? Um, it should be uh, about 370000 okay. So I guess one of the questions is, do we need to be putting $200,000 into that stabilization fund if we already have three seventy five there? What's our what's our likelihood? How I guess how often do we end up using money out of general stabilization? Or does it mostly just get transferred out of there the following year at town meeting? Uh, we have not used it since I've gotten here. Um, so the last tab in the spreadsheet that I use is um, use of cash and at the bottom the state recommends three to five percent of your operating budget be cash reserves and I have to rework the numbers based on what we talked about but I think that we will be over five percent cash okay. reserves. Um, so I guess one of my questions would then be can we can we rather than doing 200 into the general stabilization fund could we do 150 into that and then 50,000 into our new frontier capital stabilization fund um, i think 150 going in on top of the 375 is plenty for the stabilization fund um, unless, unless somebody disagrees i i not basing this on any past experience with it i just it seems like a, a good chunk of money um I'm just going to turn because if a former select board member and finance committee members that might recall like the sewer relining project, like how much, is that what stabilization was, or was that a capital, was there an override for that? I don't think we did an override. Okay. Because <clears throat> that, I, there are half a million or more dollar projects that that could what, right, right, that you could hit, and, and I think it's a good idea if you've got that, assuming that's the use of that frontier fund, I think it's probably a good time to programmatically start putting money into that because I assume <clears throat> the roof is an example. I know they've got a whole list of things that they've got to be doing. So you could probably find out now what the horizon is and the projects that are there and kind of get an idea of how to start funding that, that to keep that, to help that minimize the outlay when it comes. So. Right. Well, first we need the <clears throat> exact definition of what that yeah, fund exactly. is. Right. So and then, then you know, okay, I can do it or I can't. Right. And then start 
assuming it is what we were thinking it is, which is a fund that allows us to set money aside for our portion of that, um, I would want to put at least 50000 into that if we can, because I did go to the Frontier Capital Planning meetings um, that happened earlier this year, and yeah, the, the roof alone is going to be... <laughs> it's going to be a lot of money for, for Sunderland, um, yep. and I'd much rather see us have a fund that has a couple hundred thousand dollars when we get to the roof than nothing. Right. So. And that's just one of the projects. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, you got to keep up building, you know. Then it's getting to the point where it's old enough. That yep. <clears throat> so, so, Crystal, do you, do you feel like fifty thousand as a first step for that fund would be enough, or do we want to try to rework things and come up with more than that? So I'm looking here, so I'm thinking that's the most we can have for the 5%, right? For the free cash, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I think once Jeff starts you know, getting an exact here. We already know that exact. This was just, if, right. you know, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and I mean, and again, if 200 is going to put this over. You could take the balance of that and put it into the frontier one. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. If we can, the capital stabilization, I, I, I don't want to try to touch as much because I just had a meeting an hour ago and we have millions of dollars worth of projects over the next 10 years that we need to do in Sunderland. Um, and so I don't want to reduce that. I would like to put the full 200 into that stabilization if we can. The general stabilization fund. Um, Unless I'm hearing somebody tell me otherwise, it sounds like if we put 150 instead of 200 into that fund, that would be acceptable. Um, and then we could put 50 into the frontier capital. Does that sound good, Crystal? Yeah, I, I'm just trying to look at these. Yeah, I mean, I and again, I think. Once Jeff starts pulling out some real numbers, he can send us emails and stuff during the week or texts or, or yeah. you know, whatever we can we can make some more. Because really when you start looking at that, you know, this total, fifty thousand really isn't a big chunk of that total. Yeah. So, you know, if you make the decision you wanna somehow come up with fit 50,000-ish for the frontier stabilization. Once we find out how that really works, you can kind of, you know, make this number, or not that, but you can make this number, those ones, you know, kind of yep. balance them out. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. All right. Jeff lose magic. <clears throat> For the warrant, and we don't need to vote on anything for the warrant. All right, <coughs> select board updates. Um, had a capital planning committee meeting right before this one. Um, we finalized or came a lot closer to finalizing our um, recommendations to the select board and have broken down where money's going where and based on what. Um, so that should be ready for us in the select board soon. But that's it for me. I had nothing this week. I like these weeks. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> nice weeks. Jeff? Um, a couple quick things. Obviously, town meeting and elections are right around the corner. Tuesday is the last day to register to vote at town meeting or the election. Uh, yes, at the annual town election or annual town meeting. Um, we're closed Monday for Patriots Day, um, Marathon Monday. And 
um, on Tuesday. Like I said, hopefully we'll be finalizing the warrant so that we can get it posted and up on the website and get everything out. Um, the other thing that I'm working on this month is reporting for ARPA. Every end of April, we have to report on April 1st through March 31st spending. So I'm working on that and I'll obviously share the report with the select board. Yeah, great. Um, you already know what we spent it on, but here, here's actually, yeah. you know what you appropriated, here's how we actually spent it and what's been done so yeah. far. Um, and then the last thing is that the South County, oh, I hope I know, South County Senior Center is doing a uh, transportation needs assessment survey. Um, and that is at the Senior Center. There is free transportation available to get there. It's Tuesdays, April 11th, 18th, 25th, and May 9th um, at 10 a.m. Again, 22 Amherst Road in Sunderland. Um, you can sign up by contacting the outreach coordinator at the Senior Center, Chris Goudreau, uh, at 413-678 excuse me, 413-768-1066 or scoc at town.deerfield.ma.us um, to be part of the working group. Obviously, transportation is a huge issue. Um, FRTA, PVTA, <laughs> we have unique issues here in Sunderland, um, so we certainly encourage everybody to go out, um, share their experiences and ideas for improving. That's the end of mine. Okay. <coughs> Anyone on Zoom or in the audience have any? Okay. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. All right. I move we adjourn. I second it. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Two zero.